known to you all as Thunderhead 289. And today we're just going to go over um, uh, one of the pieces that are seldom talked about. It's almost kind of fallen into folklore. But anyway, we're going to go through some ignition timing stuff. So today I want to take a moment to just go over this. Um, it's something that folks really just don't know too much about, it seems like. Uh, anymore and really your carburetor settings and tuning ignition timing it all works together in a harmonious balance not to sound all zen about it so each piece is important and the adjustments of one will affect the other so today we're just going to jump into it and review ignition timing so in this video today we're not going to get too terribly in depth just enough to get your feet wet and then um, moving forward I could make individual videos about um, each item and go more in depth in those and the understanding and uh, some of the setup of each of those pieces. But today we're just going to take a brief overview. We're going to go through um, ignition timing as it relates to uh, engine dynamics, just so we have an understanding of the form and function and purpose of ignition timing. And we'll address some of the common misconceptions with ignition timing, like more timing, more power, which isn't uh, necessarily always the case. Um, Moving on from there, we'll take a look at um, the distributor itself. We'll pull the cap off and go through um, some of the adjustments you can make to these guys and some understanding there. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so to start off, I want to take a look at the actual goal. Um, what we're actually trying to achieve by adjusting our ignition timing. So um, it's, it's really not all that complex. Uh, really, you want to basically fully um, ignite your cylinder charge right when your piston has rolled over center and is uh, just beginning um, its power stroke. So um, anything before that is just spark knock where you're going to put a hole in the top of your piston, um, which isn't good. And anything after that is where you're just firing, uh, burning your mixture at some point when your piston has already gone down um, on the power stroke to a degree and you're just leaving power on the table because you're not taking full advantage of that engine stroke. So um, with that, that's pretty uh, conceptually simple, but it's a devil in the details. And hopefully after this video, you'll understand um, somehow to get closer to that and how to make all that more attainable. Now, of course, with ignition timing, everything is in um, before top dead center. So 15 degrees BTDC, um, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. When we're, when we're talking ignition timing specs, it's all before top dead center. Um, we're actually firing that mixture before the piston has reached TDC because there's a number of factors that overall affect the flame propagation or the, the burn time on that uh, mixture before it, it makes power. So we're gonna go over some of those very briefly and why we actually have to advance our ignition timing um, and, and why you have different ignition timing um, parameters for different scenarios. So uh, obviously the, the two biggest ones we're going to go over today, and there are other ones, but for your understanding we're going to focus on two today. Obviously RPM, which conceptually this is very simple. As RPM increases to keep up, you need to fire that mixture sooner. Well, you need to send the ignition out sooner and sooner so you're still burning at the right time. And then um, cylinder pressures are, are our other item. So um, basically a less dense mixture will burn slower and a more dense mixture will burn much faster. So, uh, and, and some of that stuff we'll look at with the distributor as far as vacuum advance and mechanical advance and that'll make a lot of sense here in a little bit. Um, but basically as cylinder pressures increase, it's a more dense mixture and that's gonna burn much quicker while, um, and normally that's when you're hard into the throttle of course now when you're just cruising around, you're, you're really not getting a good volumetric fill. Uh, your cylinder charge is much less dense, so you have to fire that mixture earlier in order to get that proper burn time right when you want to for the most efficient, uh, again, use of your cylinder stroke. So we'll go through some of those parts and pieces. Why don't we jump over to the distributor now and address uh, some of those cylinder pressure items that affect our ignition timing. All right, so we have our distributor cap and rotor off here, and we can take a look down inside our distributor. Now I'll get to the actual adjustments of a distributor and some of the theory behind that in just a minute. But as far as um, 
ignition timing as it relates to cylinder pressures and throttle position and all of that. So uh, on most distributors, and I highly recommend if you drive your car on the street at all, you do utilize a vacuum advance unit. Now reason being is because the vacuum advance and mechanical advance um, kind of handle two different uh, driving scenarios that you'll experience on the road. So a uh, mechanical advance is RPM driven, springs and weights, and as RPM increases, it's going to advance your ignition timing. Now, vacuum advance is a little different and then in that it pulls in additional uh, timing on top of your mechanical timing uh, based on a vacuum signal. When you're cruising down the road, you don't have a lot of throttle input to your carburetor. Manifold uh, vacuum is, is fairly high and you're pulling in this vacuum advance and adding ignition timing. Reason being is because when you're cruising, you're not really, again, um, as we mentioned earlier, getting a good cylinder fill, and so it's a much less dense uh, fuel charge, and it has a much longer burn time. So you need to fire your um, mixture sooner in order to get good flame propagation right when uh, that piston is starting its um, path down uh, the cylinder bore. So uh, if you don't have this and you're just cruising around, you're really just leaving economy on the table because with that leaner mixture and your low throttle angles, you're now burning that mixture on, again, light throttle angles when it's partially down the cylinder bore. So you're going to see less economy out of that. Now, of course, when you step on the throttle, that vacuum advance is um, thrown out the window because manifold vacuum goes very low, below the threshold of where vacuum advance is being pulled in and you're just on your mechanical timing, your cylinder volume um, is filled to a much greater extent per se, your cylinder pressures are gonna be much higher and because of that much more dense uh, fuel and air charge you have, uh, the burn time is much quicker. So that's why you pull out your vacuum advance and you're just on a mechanical advance because you don't need all that extra ignition timing. Remember what we said earlier, if you're too far advanced, you're gonna have spark knock. Uh, basically, you're firing your mixture fully before that piston's all the way up to stroke, and it's just like a hammer hitting down on the top of your piston. And um, usually things don't last too long like that. So again, that's what we want to avoid. But that's just kind of some of the form and function of mechanical timing and uh, back in advance and how they relate to your different engine dynamic um, scenarios. All right, so getting into distributor adjustments, timing curves, and all that jazz, which is really my favorite piece to all this and why I really do like um, a good carbureted setup. There's just a lot of fun you can, you can have with this stuff. So um, anyway, there's a common misconception again, the more timing you run, the more performance. And if you've been paying attention, you'll note that that's not exactly true. As we discussed, spark knock, firing the mixture too soon is obviously a very bad thing. But, um, I can vouch for them in the fact that most uh, factory setups and even stock or, uh, aftermarket distributors, when you get them in, they usually have a fairly lazy timing curve because they're safe. They're going to fire that mixture a little bit later and you're not going to put a hole in your piston, which is bad, and you'd be calling, you know, Protronics here angry that they allowed you to do that. So starting off with the timing curve, basically what I try and do is run uh, as aggressive of an advanced curve as I can uh, before the point of where I would hear spark knock. If I hear spark knock, um, I have to back it off. Now, I don't mean back it off by adjusting our distributor around. Um, everything it, when you set your idle settings is kind of a balance again. So, and I do have methods in other videos that I show where I go through and how I set initial timing. So, instead of adjusting our distributor body, which would alter our initial advance, our total timing, and all of that. Really what you want to do is recurve your distributor. Any aftermarket manufacturer will supply you with um, uh, different advanced springs and you can try different combinations. But again, um, is to agree with that old adage of as much timing as you can run, you know, you're better off. You want to advance your timing as quick as you can right before the point of spark knock. And that's where you're going to, if you're going for most power, that's where you're going to make it in the, the scenario that'll give that to you. And if at any point you hear uh, spark knock, pinging, or anything like that, it kind of sounds like rocks in a coffee can rattling around, you absolutely want to stop and back it off because it's a very short trip between that sound and then where you have completely destroyed your engine. It's, 
it's just not worth it. So, you know, and that's why most of this stuff, again, comes with heavy springs on it. Everything is set, super safe, factory distributors, aftermarket distributors, you know, they're all set with heavy springs, super lazy timing curves so that, you know, you don't do any damage. But if you hear that noise, you know, you're going to want to make adjustments pretty quick. All right, guys, so that's just a very brief overview of some of the methodology that um, I go through when I set up uh, timing curves and distributors. Um, again, the, the biggest thing I want to stress and one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is, again, they're, they're trying to pull in their timing way too fast because someone told them, you know, bring your timing as soon as possible all in by 2500. You know, not necessarily the case depending on what vehicle you have. Um, when they're adjusting their timing, they're moving their distributor body around. Uh, there is a way that I set up all of the, the vehicles that I tune as far as initial settings go and it, uh, ign initial ignition timing. And uh, basically when you start doing that, you're, you're messing all that stuff up. So um, you, you really want to tune with your curve and then obviously you have some stop bushings to, to limit your total timing because you don't want that to you know, go like crazy either. So, you know, get yourself a timing light as far as carburetor settings go. I use this AEM uh, wideband O2 sensor. And, you know, I got some videos over that that I'll link below if you want to check that stuff out, how to use it, what it looks like, and all of that there. So, anyway, with that, guys, I'm going to get back to work here. I got some stuff going on the Galaxy, a supercharger to put in it, and some other dumb stuff. As far as forced induction goes, Obviously, that's going to be a lot more cylinder pressure because it's pushing more volume. Uh, it's better than atmospheric pressure. And so that burn time, again, is going to be much quicker. And that's why there's boost retard modules that pull ignition timing when more boost is added. So there's just a little added bonus for you guys there. But anyway, I'm going to get back to work. If you have any questions, um, drop a comment below. Again, I run that Facebook page, which I'll link below. And, you know, um, I respond pretty good there. I get all the notifications for that. YouTube here, some, for some reason, I don't. So <laughs> I miss a lot of your comments and uh, questions. But anyway, I'm going to shut up. Catch you guys later. Take care.